For those studying at the College of William and Mary in the late winter of 2020, life was a routine series of classes and extracurriculars like any other year. Those who read the news might occasionally see an article about a previously unknown respiratory virus quickly spreading across the Wuhan province of China. But COVID-19, commonly referred to as the coronavirus, was a distant thought in the minds of those residing in Williamsburg. On a cold night in February, just after nine, Jemima Winthrop was studying in her home when she was surprised by a knock at her door. I didn't know how to react when Cyrus showed up at my door unannounced in the middle of the night to deliver face masks. When he told me they were for coronavirus, I had to restrain myself from laughing. The virus will never reach Williamsburg. On March 19th, the school decided to close over coronavirus concerns. Students still on campus would have to implement their evacuation plan. Those already quarantined at home looked to the months ahead with the realization that they would not be able to retrieve their belongings from campus. Junior Alexa Manfredi wrote to her roommate Emma Johnson, As I was only expecting to be gone a week, I only brought three shirts with me. When the weather warms up, I will simply have to melt. There are worse things than clothes to forget. I'm sorry to tell you this, but I think I left a salad in our fridge again. I suppose we shall see how it fared in a few months. Sophomore Ben Davis wrote to girlfriend Julianne Cook, I am writing to you to express my deepest condolences for your loss, which as I understand it is rather insignificant but nevertheless keenly felt. I am of course talking about myself. When the evacuation orders went through, those still on campus had to move quickly. Those who had cars simply drove away, but the students without had to resort to desperate measures. A bike rack was ripped out of the ground in a frenzy to acquire a vehicle. Lone students could be spotted making their way carefully through the woods to the edge of Lake Matoka, only visible for a few moments as they avoided human contact like the plague. Evacuees pushed off from the Botetot docks, and boats and canoes stolen from the lakeshore. Those with tools could even cut down the surrounding trees to build rafts. By the end of the evacuation period, the woods had been picked clean of anything that would float. Dorms became dangerous, not just for their close quarters. A biohazard was discovered on the third floor of Chandler Hall. A salad left in one of the rooms had decayed into a deadly, toxic cloud. Skeptics accused the administration of releasing a bioweapon through the steam tunnels, but eyewitnesses identified the source as Emma Johnson's room. While most students were running for their lives, Rumors spread that Henry Blackburn had snuck back into campus with the intention of living in the ceiling of the green and gold village. He was last heard saying, I'd rather die in Williamsburg with the homies than live in my hometown. It is unknown whether he made it back to campus or if he survived the pandemic. However, there are no records of his being caught by the campus police and future years of students who took advantage of the storage space above them found no body. While the administration prohibited the story from being told on campus tours, during orientation, the dorm's freshmen still learned to be attentive when alone in the units, where a pair of eyes may be seen glinting from within the recesses of the ceiling. March 26th, the College of William and Mary had closed its doors and opened its servers. Campus was desolate. Animals had begun to nest in the baskets of abandoned bikes. When a photo of one such nest was distributed to the campus community, Addison Whitaker wrote back, Fuck me, that's my bike. Williamsburg was a changed city. The busy thoroughfares of Richmond Road and Confusion Corner were empty. Only a few students were left. Those who had been unable to escape campus during the evacuation period and still roamed the Matoka Woods, and those who chose to quarantine in their homes and apartments off campus. One student living close to the empty campus found quarantine difficult. Hazel Nussman, a junior, was trapped under stay-at-home orders for several months. After only a few weeks, her friends began to see the symptoms of isolation appear in her letters. March 25th. I'm keeping us sane by taking Taco out for walks every day as he needs his exercise. April 3rd. I was digging my garden when I discovered a layer of bricks. I believe I have found a lost city of bricks under my yard. Taco and I will live there happily until fall. April 20th. Bubbles! Bubbles, bubbles, bubbles! Bubbles? Bubbles, 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 bubbles! Bubbles! Neighbors called the authorities when they heard maniacal laughter and slapping sounds coming from her backyard. 
When they arrived, they found her building a human torso out of clay. She spent the remainder of her quarantine in Eastern State Hospital. In spring, President Roe announced her intentions to hold commencement ceremonies the weekend of October 9th. Celebrating together, in person, continues to be our goal. Graduates and their families will enjoy all the pomp and circumstance this ancient university has to offer. It will be glorious. Stay well, Catherine. The college would be greatly changed by the fall. While the weather stayed cool, the return of nature was gradual, but the progression of spring to summer brought a new generation of the common squirrel. The local squirrel population was known to be bold at the best of times, but with the notable absence of humanity to keep them in check, the squirrel nation asserted its hold over campus. By May 3rd, the college had been converted into a school for squirrels. When humans returned, a few skirmishes broke out along the trails near the sunken gardens. On September 22nd, 2020, President Roe met with the commander of the squirrel forces to arrange a peace settlement. The result was that humans maintained control of the main college, while the squirrels were allowed to continue the education of their youth in Morton Hall, with shared access to Matoka and the trails. Roe reflected in her email to the students, We felt this arrangement would best meet the needs and ensure the safety of students, faculty, and squirrels. Besides, no one liked Morton anyways. The Morton School for Young Squirrels ran for 17 years, until 2038, when Morton Hall sank into the swamp. In fall 2020, the College of William and Mary reopened its campus for students. It had been a long six months, but with the stores reopened and nature reigned in for the time being, to those who returned, it looked on the surface as if nothing had changed. But there were striking changes in the students, who before the pandemic had been absorbed in the stress culture of academia, now saw new urgency in time with friends and loved ones. The months of isolation and longing for human contact would not soon be forgotten. In the words of Silas Page, class of 2023, in a survey on community well-being, that sucked.